Hi everyone and welcome. We're so glad you could be here with us today. I'm Tammy, the creator of the blog and this YouTube channel called Nutmeg Notebook. And this is where we share with you all about a whole food plant-based lifestyle. And today's topic is all about water. Are you thirsty or are you hungry? And I'll tell you why I decided to do this in just a minute. But first, we're going to do a little bit of housekeeping. So we have moderators in the chat feed. Jesse and Randy are here and Tiffany will be joining us a little bit later as well. They can help answer any questions that you have. And if there's a question they can't answer, then Tom and I will try to answer that for you. We just ask if you have a question in the chat feed, if you could preface the question with three or four question marks and end with three or four question marks, that just helps those questions pop out to Tom as he's moderating the chat. So that would be very helpful. Are you going to come on and say hi? Hello, everybody. Good evening. It's Sunday, 4 o'clock. Time for Nutmeg Notebook. Um, we are doing something a little bit different today, um, and, and we are using StreamYard uh, to broadcast simultaneously to Facebook and to YouTube at the same time. And so that, that's not new. That's a thing that folks have been doing for a while. Um, but it's new to us. Yeah. And so, if anybody is watching on Facebook, just know if you are asking questions on Facebook. They will show up, I believe, and we'll know this. Actually, if you're watching uh, on Facebook, give us a comment that you're watching from Facebook because I have two computers here. One uh, supposedly is going to be a combined chat feed. And then the other one is, is solo YouTube with our usual chat feed. So if anyone is here uh, watching from Facebook. You'd like to know. Yeah, I mean, I can... I'm going to actually jump over to Facebook and take a look. Uh, moderators, um, I see we have Randy here and Jesse. I don't see... Uh, Tiffany's coming later. later. I've already okay. made an announcement. All right. How's, <laughs> how's the sound? Too loud? Too soft? Just right? So would um, you put up the picture of, of a glass of water for me? Get everybody. Okay. And, and who has their water going? I've got my water going here. So... Hopefully you've got some water going as well. So water is just, which camera am I on now, Tom? You're on your main camera and we okay, do great. have uh, Anita from uh, Facebook. Uh, well, Kelly is here from Facebook. Anita awesome. From, oh, look. Okay. Oh, it gives we you have a, emblems. It tells us right here whether great. it's, now do you get that over there? Or is that just you two? I do not have that over here. Okay. So on my iPad. Okay, Facebook people, then you're going to be dependent on me. So, so make sure you put those <laughs> questions. I do have my reading glasses on, but give me those question marks. If you have a question for Tammy, and I will be, I'll be checking that other screen for you guys. Okay, uh, back to your water. Okay. Yes. So I decided to uh, do a little bit of research on water because as many of you know who follow us that I did a modified intermittent fasting for 10 days through our friend Sia Hurst from 6D Living. I think we've got four videos about it because I uh, did video updates to let you know what my progress was like while I did that. And during the 10 days of that, we had two days where we did water only fasting instead of just intermittent. Water played such a huge important part during the water only fasting. And I was amazed at the power that water has and how it can heal the body. It's just amazing. And so I wanted to do a little more research about water. Um, I also, during that 10 days of intermittent fasting and a little bit of water fasting, I discovered that I have constipation. And you know what? I was not drinking nearly enough water. And so when I started increasing my water, what a huge difference it made. I feel so much better. Um, it's just amazing the power that water has. So I did a little bit of research online about water because I wanted to learn more for myself. And I thought, wow, this is so interesting. I have to share it with our plant-based community because maybe you guys already know all this 
Um, but it's a lot of it was new to me. So I just wanted to share it with you. And I did watch Dr. Greger from nutritionfacts.org, several of his videos about water. And, you know, he's so fascinating and so great and offers so much information. And so a lot of my material today that I'm going to share with you came from him. So, um, and, and one thing that people do confuse uh, is hunger for thirst. And I know that I was absolutely guilty of doing that. So, and it's very common. Um, but what can happen is that the result of that is that we can be taking in a lot of extra calories that we don't need. So it's really good to be able to determine the difference between hunger and thirst. And our body is going to tell us, you know, eat if we're not drinking something, because it knows that if we eat, at least if we eat certain foods, that it will get some water from those foods. So our body doesn't really care if we're giving it food that contains water or are we giving it just water because it needs the hydration. And since it's the same part of the brain that tells us when we're hungry, that tells us that we're thirsty, it's easy to get confused. And I didn't realize that it was the same part of the brain that that tells us both of those feelings. So signs of hunger could include feeling weak, irritable, moody, feeling empty, or maybe having a rumbly tummy. And true hunger comes on gradually, not all of a sudden. Now, sometimes, you know, we might be really busy and doing things and we might not be paying attention and seeing or hearing or feeling those feelings of hunger and then all of a sudden you know we feel like we're ravenous but true hunger does build and come on gradually now signs of thirst by the time you feel thirsty i know we've all heard this before you're already becoming dehydrated. So if you wait until you're really thirsty, it's almost too late. You should have been drinking water all along so that you wouldn't get dehydrated. Some other signs of dehydration are feeling weak, getting a headache, really feeling sluggish, not having any energy. It can cause nausea and dizziness, constipation, low blood pressure, confusion, your urine will probably be really dark yellow, and it can cause a dry mouth. So if you're not sure if you're hungry or thirsty, drink a glass of water and then wait 15 or 20 minutes and see what happens. If you're feeling satisfied and you no longer feel hungry, then it was probably just thirst. If you think you're hungry, eat something and wait 15 to 20 minutes and see how you're feeling. If you're not satisfied, maybe you need something to drink and water is more um, hydrating than anything else that we can drink. If it still doesn't go away and you just have that nagging feeling, it's probably really a craving rather than true hunger or thirst. And that's good to know if you're trying to lose weight, being able to distinguish between the two, realizing, you know, when you're truly hunger, hungry, anything will satisfy the hunger, green beans, an apple, some beans, anything. If nothing like that sounds good, then it's probably a craving. Or if you're wanting something very specific, that's probably a craving and not true hunger. And so that is also good to recognize and know and to have that um, knowledge. So dehydration has been linked to some really adverse health outcomes. It, it is said that it contributes to more falls and fractures in the elderly increased stroke mortality during heat waves for the elderly, kidney disease, bladder and colon cancer, kidney stones, um, UTIs, and constipation. You see that constipation keeps coming up. 
even if you have a really healthy whole food plant-based diet, you can still have constipation. So I had to have a couple of MRIs done because of my sciatic nerve pain. And the radiologist on both of those said, patient suffers from constipation. And I thought, what? What are you saying? I eat a whole food plant-based diet. I get a lot of fiber. I don't have constipation. But now I do believe that he was right. So what does drinking water do for us? So many amazing things, you guys. Uh, it carries nutrients and oxygens to our cells. It flushes bacteria from the bladder. It aids in digestion and prevents constipation. It normalizes blood pressure, cushions our joints, which I never even really thought about that, helps prevent headaches, protects our organs and our tissues, affects our energy levels, and our brain health, helps regulate our body temperature, helps maintain our electrolytes balance, and that is the amount of sodium in our body. It boosts athletic performance. Like somebody who's dehydrated can't go out and perform well athletically. It can also boost your metabolism. So get this. Now, I learned about this on Dr. Greger's nutritionfacts.org. He has a video that you can watch. If you just go in and do a search for water, the video will come up. In a randomized controlled study, drinking two glasses of water at once resulted in a surge of the adrenal hormone noradrenaline in the bloodstream, it was the same effect as if you'd drank two cups of coffee or smoked a filterless cigarette. Yeah, isn't that crazy? So the water can boost your metabolism by 30 to 44% within one hour of drinking two cups of water over the control group in that study who was not drinking the water. So I thought that was pretty amazing. So if you are in weight loss mode and you're not drinking a lot of water, you might want to start gradually increasing the amount of water that you drink because it has such a profound effect on your metabolism. Then the next question is, how much water do we need to drink? And I know people send me emails sometimes and asking me, how much water should I drink? Well, on average, we get about one liter of water a day from our food and the metabo metabolic water that our body produces itself. Now, those of us who follow a whole food plant-based lifestyle, we might be getting more depending on how many raw vegetables we're eating and how many wet starches. Wet starches would be things like a hot steamy potato, um, oats or other grains that are cooked in water because those have been plumped up and so they have a lot of water in them. Of course, our fruits, our fresh vegetables, anything that hasn't been dehydrated um, or even air frying is going to dehydrate the food to a certain degree. So uh, beyond that, according to Dr. Greger's uh, video, women need another four to seven cups of water a day and men need six to 11. Of course, that's not taking into account like if it's hot outside and you're working out in the yard or the garden or you're hiking or riding a bicycle or playing a sport, if you're doing that and you're sweating a lot and it's a hot day, then you're obviously going to need to have more water. But on average, women need an additional four to seven cups of water a day and men need an additional six to 11 above and beyond what food you're eating that would contain water. Now, Dr. Greger says not to drink more than three cups of water within one hour because that is the amount 
of water that the kidneys can safely handle. Drinking more than that, more than three cups in an hour, can dilute the electrolytes and that can have critical health consequences because then the a balance of sodium will be out of whack for your body. It's also better to sip the water gradually throughout the day, taking in smaller amounts and gradually allowing the kidneys to function normally. And then this is always interesting, the Adventist health studies, I just find those fascinating. So they had um, the Adventist health study of 20,000 men and women with half of them were fully vegetarian. So they were getting additional water from fruits and vegetables. Tom, can you show us uh, a picture of the fruits and vegetables? I forgot you weren't paying attention. <laughs> Thank you. And so here's those fruits and vegetables that are, you know, look at them. They're all plump and vibrant and they're full of water. Um, and so when we're eating those, we are getting more hydration from those than we are if we're eating dry things, processed foods. And so they come in a heart shape too. And they come in a heart shape too. You know, I love everything heart shaped. I, and I thought, I thought this picture was just beautiful. Um, and so anyway, what they, they followed the, this group of 20,000 men and women. And even though they were getting, um, water from their fruits and vegetables, what they discovered, uh, was that the people in the study who drank an additional five glasses, and that would be eight ounce glasses, an additional five glasses of water a day above the intake from the food had half the risk of dying from heart disease compared to those who only drank two or less glasses of water a day. So I'm going to say that again, because I think this is like really um, important. So out of the study of 20,000 men and women, half of them being vegetarian, who got a lot of hydration from their fruits and vegetables, those who drank five additional eight ounce glasses of water a day had half the risk of dying from heart disease compared to those who only drank two or less glasses of water a day. So I just think, oh my gosh, that just goes to show us how important water is. And what they also discovered in those two um, uh, studies, the one about the metabolism and the one about heart disease, is it's water that we need to be counting. It doesn't count the same if we're drinking soda or juice or coffee or tea. It's water, pure water is what we need to be drinking to get those um, boosts, boost of metabolism and just helping our body to be able to function properly. So, so anyway, and 60% of our body is made up of water. So water is so important. And here's the deal. When I first started the 10-day um, intermittent fasting program and we were, you know, trying to get in a lot of water, I realized how dehydrated I was because I didn't have to urinate for the first couple of hours, even though I was drinking a lot of water. So that told me right there and then that I was dehydrated. And so I have really ramped up my water and I'm, I am drinking um, between like 80 and uh, 100 um, ounces a day now. And so, and that's really good for me. And now I, it's just what I want. I want more water. I'm just loving the freshness of it. It's so great. And so, and different ways to get it in. Some people will tell me, I don't like to drink water. You know, it's boring. Well, you can infuse it like I have here. I wished I used up all my mint in a recipe, um, but I do like to put mint in it, but I have fresh limes 
and fresh cucumbers in the water. And so you can also use fruit. If you like um, citrus, you can use slices of orange. Also, it's delicious with strawberries in it. We went to a <coughs> vegan restaurant one time and their water was strawberry infused. They had fresh strawberries in their water pitchers. And that can be very refreshing as well. And then I like to put mint in it. Mint is just so clean tasting. So I actually, I like to do lemon or lemon or lime, cucumbers, and then fresh mint. And you just want to take that fresh mint and kind of crumble it up in your hands a little bit before you put it in the water. And that just releases the natural oils that are in the mint and allows those oils to come out in the water and infuse the water. And Tom, you have a question. Oh, uh, from Tracy over there. Can you see it? Yeah, so, um, and so exactly what, does it matter what kind of water you drink? I'm not sure. Are you talking about? Bottled, still, yeah, half, so, filtered. Well, what Dr. Greger says on his site is that when they um, did uh, studies on bottled water versus tap water, that they like had equal amounts of bacteria. And so, you know, depending on where you live and how pure and clean your water is and how good it tastes, you may or may not want to um, have some sort of a filtration system at home for that. He also said that um, he always thought when the, um, let's say the Brita or the Pure or the refrigerator um, would tell you, you know, oh, the filter is only good for X amount of time. He thought, well, they're just saying that because they want to sell more filters. But then he read a study. And what happens is those filters can start growing bacteria. And so when they tell you the filter is good for, you know, X amount of months, he was like, you want to get rid of that filter and replace it because bacteria does start to grow and build up in the filters. So whether you're using, you know, a, a pitcher that has a filter or you have a filter um, system on the water that comes out of your refrigerator, be very mindful of changing those filters so that you don't have bacteria growing. And um, you can also like where we live, our community sends out, um, is it once a year or twice a year? Once a year. Once a year. We get a report on our water and, you know, they tell us how it tested. And we're very fortunate that um, we get runoff from the Sierra Mountains and uh, we have really good tasting water where we live. We do still filter um, our drinking water, but we do have really good water right out of the tap. Yes. The water out of the carbon filter in the refrigerator behind us here does taste fresher, better, cleaner mm -hmm. than the clean water out of the tap. Uh, that is most noticeable in the summertime when um, the, the lake that stores our community water starts getting low mm -hmm. and you, we can smell, you know, it gets a little bit fishy smell in, in the, you know, in late August. Um, and then that goes away as the rains come hopefully and, and or the snow. So um, we prefer to do all of our drinking water out of the refrigerator. It is filtered. And then we, you know, I replace that filter every six months or so. Um, I might stretch it a few days. I've been known to do that. Um, but anyway, filtered, the carbon filter absolutely makes a difference in the, in the flavor and in, in the, in the heat of summer, the smell of the water that's going into our glass. So I'll support filtered water one way or another. Um, cause if it smells cleaner, it must be cleaner. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Brenda asked ice water versus room temperature. So Dr. Greger did address that. Um, it, he didn't say in the study 
which um, water, if they were drinking ice water or room temperature water, I don't believe. But he did say that people used to think, oh, if you drink cold water, then you'll burn more calories because your body will have to um, create energy to help heat you up. And he said, and really, you only burn about six extra calories um, if you drink ice water versus room temperature water. So it really just depends on what you like. Now I start the morning with a cup of hot water with some lemon in it. And you know, that's really nice because I'm usually a little bit cold then. And so that's nice and warm and just, you know, feels good and is satisfying. Um, to me. And I tend to run cold anyway. And drinking all this water, now I'm running even colder than I had been. Am I on the wrong camera? Did you switch me? No, you're on the big camera. I'm on the big camera. Okay. Yeah. I, I was looking, I was too. still looking at that one. Oh. Okay. Um, Alkaline water. So Gina says that FYI, my dentist just told me to be careful about sipping citrus water all day due to the citric acid that harms teeth. That's a really good point. So um, I mostly drink just regular um, plain water from the fridge all day long. But in the summertime, sometimes I do yeah. like to have a and little bit Jan of And Jan and Gunnar are both asking about the hype on alkaline water right now. Yeah, and so um, Dr. Greger has a um, video about alkaline, and he said that um, the uh, machines are bogus, don't get an alkaline machine. He has a video, he shows the machine, and he said, if you want alkaline water, you can simply do that by using baking soda. And you can take three quarters of a teaspoon of baking soda and add it to a quart or a liter of water. And you'll get the same benefits as if you bought one of those expensive machines. Um, he said what the alkaline water does in some studies is it does show that it does help to reduce um, the uh, overall your cholesterol. Um, but you also have to keep in mind that it is full of sodium. And so, you know, depending on what other kind of health issues, issues you have, you know, it may, that may not be a favorable thing. And there are other ways to lower your cholesterol without the alkaline water. So go to nutritionfacts.org and watch his video. So um, he said there's just a lot, awful lot of hype about those um, alkaline water machines. Um, yeah, so that was two people asked that. So we're talking about, um, so uh, there's a question um, when you're talking about cups a day, is that measuring cups or glasses? And that would be eight ounce cups of water. And Marie says she thinks that someone on the weight loss summit said don't drink cold water, but she can't remember who it was. So any we, other we tend to not use a lot of ice. We'll use ice, you know, like at dinner time if we're doing some if I'm doing palm juice and ice and some water or something, but as a rule for a, a glass of water for an everyday meal, you'll infuse it with some kind of fruit or vegetable or something. And, and I just drink it out of the fridge at whatever temperature it is, but it sits, it comes out of the fridge cooled a bit. But then we let it sit and then yeah. it's room temperature. And then we're typically not adding ice to it. The ice no. comes through. I this. don't like, I don't like ice in it. No, I don't. Um, does Dr. Greger say anything about distilled water? I didn't see anything. Um, about distilled water, but when you distill water, you're getting rid of all of the Mineral. minerals. And so it's not favorable to drink distilled water, um, you know, because you're not getting any of the minerals then. Yeah. If you're drinking only distilled water, and I, I got this from conversation, I, I think it was a gold hammer conversation as they were talking about water fasting, mm -hmm. that, that you are, um, 
going to be messing with your blood chemistry. And that is not recommended drinking distilled water as a habitual thing. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, distilled water is for iron. Uh, and I think at True North, I think they use that reverse osmosis. Moses, yeah. To, um, for their water that they. Yeah. And I'm sure Google there. has lots to say about that too, but you know, it's, yeah, it's, it's, um, th those minerals are, are important to our bodies. They are. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Any other questions? That's really all I have about the, um, the water. I just thought that all of that was just like so interesting. Um, the, you know, we just forget how important simple things are. And you kind of got like, into that from your, from your water fasting experiences mm -hmm. in recent weeks. Yeah. So, excuse me. Modified water fasting. We need to be clear about that. Right. Well, it was modified, intermittent modified, modified intermittent fasting, but we did water fast twice during, during that. Week. And I did 44 hours mm -hmm. each time. And um, it was amazing. So like if I felt a little dizzy, I would drink water. The dizziness would go away. Uh, if I felt a little bit nauseous and, and that only happened the first time that I did the water fast for 44 hours. If I felt a little bit of nauseous, have some water and it would go away. Little brain fog, drink some water and it would go away. And so it was really fascinating to see the profound effect that just drinking water had mm -hmm. during that time period. And so, um, so I am like totally sold on drinking more water. And I think I've had so far today, I mean, I filled that bottle four times and mm -hmm. it holds 21 ounces. So you've had a pretty good quota. I've had a, and plus and then I'll have yeah. this one today yeah, well, and it's right. been great. And I just realized I forgot to eat lunch. We were so busy. You forgot to eat lunch. I forgot to eat lunch. I I had. <laughs> you ate. I had a but little, I forgot I had a little bit of butternut, that spicy butternut squash soup, yeah. whatever that was from the, the cube the soup. The freezer. Mm -hmm. And, and I dumped a bunch of rice on it and called that a quick lunch since we were getting ready for things. So. I, I had, you didn't have very much. Did you no, eat breakfast today? No, I did eat breakfast today. Oh, that's good. So, um, yeah, yeah. With with her recent um, intermittent fasting thing, I've realized that I'm not exactly hungry some mornings, and so I skipped my breakfast a couple mornings because it was because um, I wasn't hungry. So, and then that's by good. noon by noon time I was hungry, and but I did eat today because I knew we were going to have a really busy day today. Mm -hmm. So it has been a really busy day today. Yeah. Um, oh, you have a little bit of an uh, announcement about I do. Uh, from the NHA, and I yes. do have this information is in the show notes. For those of you that are watching on, on YouTube, you can find it down in the show notes. If you're watching on Facebook, you'll need to jump over to YouTube to find the written show notes um, that are available on our YouTube channel, um, yeah. So, which is um, nutmeg, uh, youtube.com forward slash nutmeg notebook. So Jesse is saying again, when you say cups of water, do you mean a measuring cup or a drinking cup? It, it eight ounces, a cup, one measuring cup, eight ounces, eight ounces of water. A lot of, you know, glasses are 16 ounces, but mm -hmm. this is. Um, so a 16 ounce ounces. glass of water is technically two servings. Yeah. And Dr. Greger in one of his videos, he talks about how that old adage that you need eight, eight ounces of uh, glasses of water a day came from, I believe it was one doctor who just did a test on himself. He didn't even like test a group of people, but he came up with that. And that just like started to become the gold standard because that one guy said, mm -hmm. oh, I think everybody needs to have eight, eight ounces Mm -hmm. of water. And he was like, and then everybody just took off with that and said, okay, that's it. And nobody questioned it. You know, herd behavior. Yeah, herd behavior. Exactly. So, so we're talking eight ounces. But remember, you need women need five to seven, and uh, five to no four to seven eight ounce cups of water a day, in addition to the water that you get from your fruits and vegetables. And this is water. It doesn't, you don't get to count your coffee or your tea or your glass of wine 
or your soda or a glass of juice, water, water only. And men need six to 11 eight ounces of water a day. Unless, of course, you're being very physical or sweating or it's very hot out. What if your water is infused with barley and hops? That doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. No so beer. we do have an announcement. Um, our friend Lisa McCarl, who um, is a travel agent, and she coordinates all of the NHA, which is the National Health Association cruises that where you get to go on them and they provide you with SOS free vegan food on the cruise. And we have been on one and the food was fabulous. And it was so wonderful to not have to worry about what are we going to eat? Um, she said that she here the status of their upcoming um, cruises that they have. So um, in April, of um, 2022, so coming up the 20th through the 30th, the on the Windstar Baja and Sea of Cortez cruise, where you can swim with whale sharks, they have state rooms available in several categories. Then for the um, August 19th through 29th, the NHA Windstar Alaska cruise which Tom and I will be on, you can explore pristine areas only accessible to small ships. They have one balcony suite and um, what is this? Owner An suite. owner's suite. That's the big one in front. Oh, at, at, the, at this time. Yeah. And she is accepting names for a wait list because, you know, life happens. And sometimes people have to um, back out. And I will tell you, we have this information is in the description of, the, of this YouTube video down below with her email address. And then for February of 2023, it'll be February 17th through the 26th. The NHA Lindblad National Geographic Galapagos Expedition. They have a few double occupancy staterooms, two suites, and five solo staterooms. So if you like to travel um, by yourself and don't want to share a room, there is opportunity there for that. And we have um, we have quite a few friends actually that are going to be on that one. So, um, and that is through um, Lisa McCarl and she has her, um, we have her email down below in the description and you can contact her if you're interested in going. And we can tell you that um, we had the best experience on the Windstar cruise that we took um, to the Greek Isles. And it's a small ship, it's beautiful, but it's small, it's much more intimate. And like everybody on there, um, all of the workers end up knowing your name. And the service is just incredible. And the food was truly amazing. Um, so what a great experience to be able to go on vacation like that and not have to worry about, am I going to be able to get food, you know, that, that, um, that I would want to eat. And not only was it, you know, um, food that was SOS free, but it was also delicious. And of course, beautifully plated, which just makes the food so much more fun. Um, did Sia, Yvonne says, did Sia say to drink three to five quarts when you were doing her program? I may have heard that wrong. Just wondering because I'll be doing her program in April. And that seems like a lot. Yes, she did. She did say that. And um, when you sign up for one of her um, programs, you will get all the written materials in advance that you can read through and um, see. And I drank um, a, when I first started, maybe I would got two quarts and then I was able to um, bump it up and I was able to drink three quarts a day. And that was like just perfect for me. So, um, and I know that many of you have signed up to do the March or April or July um, intermittent fasting programs with SIA, and I will be doing the March and um, an April one right along with you. So I'm excited to do it again because it was just an incredible experience, 
And uh, I was able to get rid of the last little bit of sciatic nerve pain that I've had. And so I'm hoping that um, I can just keep on improving on that and improving my gut health and, you know, practice my new habits of drinking water and doing meditation. And um, that was just a really great experience. And she is sold out through July. And, you know, um, I believe next month she will be posting the, um, the next courses that she'll be doing after July. So I know a lot of people were very interested in doing the intermittent fasting. Uh, Karen says she's on for July and can't wait, had a consult with her and it was fantastic. And see, it is wonderful. She is she is amazing. She's just, Tom says she has fairy dust that she just sprinkles <laughs> over everyone. And she just, I'm getting goosebumps. Look at that. Look at my goosebumps. Um, because she's so knowledgeable. She makes everything seem doable and so much fun. And she's so positive. And um, we just, we love her. She's great. Okay. Let's see. Um Oh, people are talking about what they break their fast with and lots of you will be joining me. So that'll be good. So, and we have a, a little texting group, um, on WhatsApp that, and so, you know, um, those of us have already been through the program will be in the same group of new people that come in and which is really helpful because then, um, they can answer some of your questions if you're confused about something and, um, just a really wonderful experience. Okay, what else would you like to talk about? Does anybody have any just general um, plant-based questions for us? Um, I'd be happy to take those. I will apologize in advance if you have emailed me and I haven't gotten back to you between doing the intermittent fasting and then getting ready for something um, that we'll be telling you about tomorrow. I know that I am behind and, you know, on my phone, something will flash up. I'll see, oh, somebody asked a question about this, that, or the other, but then I won't remember. Was it Instagram? Was it Facebook? Was it YouTube? Was it an email? Um, and so I apologize in advance. So if you've written to me and asked me a question and I haven't answered it, send me another email and I'll do my best. Um, I got one. So what is, just a second, sweetheart, what oh. is Sia's last name and contact info? If you go to six, the number six, D is in dog, living, that is her name of her website. And on there, you can, she has a contact me um, where you can leave her a message. 60living.com. 60living.com. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. How often do you drink water on the hour or the half hour? I just, I have water with me. I don't drink it out of a straw. I have my water bottle and I just um, have it with me all the time. And I just take sips whenever I feel like I need to have a sip. And so I don't have a specific, like so much every half hour or what have you. I just um, take a sip. So if I'm working at my computer, I have it right there. And, you know, I just take drinks. Jesse's asking if you have extra bathroom runs as a result of drinking so much water that get you up in the middle of the night. I, I always get up in the middle of the night. Um, and I, you know, I've always done that. And so I did when I first started drinking more water, I did have more um, bathroom runs. And now that has like leveled off. I mean, I go more now than I used to because I wasn't drinking very much water previously. And so I do go more. But initially, I had a lot more um, bathroom runs. And now that has tapered off. And I think it's just like more normal um, based on how much water I'm drinking. So I do not have any tips for that, um, Jesse. 
And because I have... What's the question? Do you have to... Oh, the, I'm sorry. Um, some people have indicated problems with too many bathroom runs at night when they drink adequate water during the day. Do you have any tips for that? Well, try not to drink as much water in the evening. That's a tip. So I don't drink any water past dinner. I have my water with dinner and then I try not to drink any more than that. Um, because that's helpful. I have switched my having my chopped salad from lunch to having it um, at dinner time. So Tom and I are more on the same eating schedule with that. And so I'm having my chopped salad in the um, for my last meal of the day because I moved my more calorically dense meal to lunchtime so that my body has more time to burn off those um, calories. And so because the salad is raw and mostly it's um, uh, vegetables, I do add some starch to it, but it's mostly vegetables. Then I have, I'm saving that for my evening meal because it's lower calorie density since I have less time between that and when I go to bed to actually burn off those calories. And so um, I do notice that I do have to get up and go to the bathroom because of that and tell my body adjust to doing that because it's so full of water. If I could eat dinner most nights earlier, that would be helpful. But stop drinking your water um, earlier than you do. And so um, Yvonne asked, do you stop drinking water at a certain time of the day? I try to stop when dinner is over so that I have more time, you know, to get rid of it before I go to bed. But for years, I've had to get up and go to the uh, restroom during the night. So that's just how it is. I've, I've had um, surgery on my um, urethra and that's it's just how it is. There's a couple of questions uh, from uh, up above. Uh, Dina asked, you know, have you heard anything about Berkeley water filters? Um, the Ber people that have them love them. We don't. The burpees. Yeah, we don't burpees. have a personal experience with them. So, um, so Bev says, how necessary is breakfast if not hungry? I typically am not eating whole food plant-based sofas until four to six, but I'm not losing weight too well. So, you know, it's kind of an individual thing. I do better not having breakfast myself. Um, I am not actually hungry until lunchtime. So that works well for me. Tom has discovered that some mornings he's not hungry, so he doesn't eat um, breakfast. Breakfast doesn't have to be the early in the morning when you first get up. It is breaking your fast and that can take place at any time of day. But, um, you know, you may want to have an appointment with one of the plant-based physicians who um, kind of specializes in weight loss and get some advice and some help on that. Sherry um, Ellison has a question. Okay. Further down. Uh, Sherry Ellison is, is asking how uh, much salad greens you buy and do you wash and dry them um, for yourself? So we just did we just what video? Did, we just did a video. What was that on? Uh, not yesterday, day before. Yeah, that was it. Yeah. On YouTube. It's on YouTube. So it, a it YouTube is called, live. it's called the Whole Foods Veggie Run or something like that. It's just going to be the video or two ahead of this one on our regular video uh, list. So, um, yeah, so we spent a good half an hour talking about a little washing over. and putting up vegetables. Exactly. Uh, the answer to your question is on that video. Yeah. So just a couple of days ago, we did that. So check that one out. And then we also have a video on how to batch prep those salads. And you, I show you exactly um, what I buy and how I make them. Uh, also up earlier at the feed, there was a uh, discussion or dialogue about the truth about weight loss summit that ended today. Um, and Tammy was on there today on, on the program. I was. And you were too. I was on it too. Yeah. 
And you did great. It's got, you know, the question was how much more playtime there is. And in, in between each day, each day's videos were up until the next day's video starts. So kind of a 24 hour thing. But we've already used up some of our 24 hours today. Another uh, viewer uh, mentioned in the chat that there was about 15 ish hours left of today's program. And then after, you know, same time tomorrow, noon tomorrow, then the net will go away if you haven't if you haven't uh, decided to buy the purchased version of the program. But the free version is still up. And if you haven't had a chance to watch it, please uh, jump in there. And and also in past years, they have rerun it for like a weekend where they just for yeah. like a whole weekend. A three day marathon. They'll let you watch it again um, or you can purchase it. Um, do you remember how much it is this year? I don't. And they also... They have, um, you can upgrade to the buddy package where you get, you get it. And then you would get, um, you can share it with one person. And so if two of you want it, you could go in on it and split it 50, mm -hmm. 50 and get it that, but I'm sure it's under a hundred dollars. Yeah. And then you have the videos for life. So you can go back and watch them again and again. If you haven't looked at that, despite all of the noise that we've been making for the last few <laughs> weeks, it, I did do one last entry in today's uh, Nutmeg Notebook email announcements uh, that we were going to be on. I sent it out early to, earlier today. That's why the email went out early. For those of you that look for that reminder about our four o'clock show, I sent it at eight something so that uh, actually I sent it at seven o'clock or so in, in the morning Pacific time to give folks a heads up that this was the last day of the summit and to jump on there. So our link, our affiliate link to get on that summit is in that email for those of you that are signed up for Nutmeg Notebook notifications. And if you're not signed up to get our emails, you're missing out. You can fix that. Fix it. Go to Nutmeg Notebook and subscribe. It's free. We do mm -hmm. not sell your email to anyone. And what we try to do is when we know that there's really great things that are happening in the plant-based community, we try to let you know about them. And so $97 is we're getting the answer. Okay. Here. 97. I knew it was under a hundred. Um, and it's well worth it. The information is amazing. So Jesse says, Barb asked earlier today that you mentioned freezing salad for soup later. Do those salads include lettuce or only greens such as kale? They do not. I do not make my salads with any lettuce anymore. Um, I, you know, we used to use romaine, but the romaine just was getting to be so dirty and rusty looking. Even, I mean, we would buy organic romaine and it would just look terrible and be so full of bugs that I would have to wash it three, four times just to get all the bugs and the dirt off. So finally I said, that's it. I am done using lettuce. And so we don't use any yeah. lettuce. We have a video um, it, that we did. It was a live that we did a few months ago and it's called um, no, uh, yeah. batch prepping salads, salads no, no romaine. romaine. And it's on our, it's here. Yeah, right and here actually, it's been a, channel. it's been a well watched uh, video. That one, yes. you know, it gets it gets more views than the regular salad videos. And she realized afterwards, it's like, oh, I can cook these now that there's no romaine in them. So it was kind of a bonus. Yeah, yeah. and so yeah, absolutely, it was a bonus. And so now we can we can saute them, and because you know, look at it, you'll see what all the ingredients are. And, or it can all be chopped up and put in um, soup. And so it's extremely versatile. And that way also there's no waste. And then you can just pop it in a freezer bag and freeze it. Of course, if you're going to do that, um, then I recommend that you just put it in like a soup or something like that. Um, but yeah, it's great. And, and sometimes I decide I want something hot instead of cold and I'll saute it. Now it's delicious and I'll put some vinegar on it and eat it with oat groats or a sweet potato or, um, some, you know, a regular baked potato and it's delicious and so satisfying. And that way, you know, we're getting in all of our vegetables and we don't like to waste food. So it's a really wonderful way to not waste food. So there's so much that we can do in the kitchen, you guys, to um, 
save money and to save waste. So you know what I always say, work smarter, not harder in the kitchen. And it's really important. I, I've heard from a few people in the last um, week who are struggling to stay whole food plant-based and um, the, not finding the food to be tasty because they haven't neuroadapted and they haven't neuroadapted because they aren't consistent. And so one thing that we know for sure is that you have to be really consistent. And the more effort you put into making healthy and wise choices, the better results you're going to have. So, and that's whether you're trying to lose weight or reverse heart disease or improve on your um, glucose numbers if you're type 2 diabetic or borderline diabetic. I mean, really, it's, you know, you have arthritis, whatever the um, health issue is, the more consistent you are with the whole food plant based SOS free diet and um, the um, better choices that you're making, the better results you're going to have sooner. So, you know, people who go to the McDougal program or go to True North Health Center, they start improving on all of their numbers uh, for cholesterol and, and blood pressure and everything within a week to 10 days. I mean, that's how quick this diet works for whatever is ailing you. It's fast. But the key thing is when they're going to the McDougal program, they are only eating the food that the McDougal program has. When they go to True North Health Center, whether they're water fasting or, um, you know, going there and um, just to eat healthy, then they're only having healthy food. They're following the protocol a hundred percent. Now you don't have to be a hundred percent perfect. I, I really liked what Dr. Esser said today in the summit. He said, you don't have to seek out perfection, but you do need to strive for excellence. And I love that. We don't have to be perfect, but we do need to be excellent. And so if you're not making choices that are excellent, then you're not getting the results that you want because you're not doing the program. So it's hard to say, well, whole food plant-based doesn't work for me or this program or that program doesn't work for me if you're not actually working the program. So you also won't neuroadapt and think that this food tastes good if you keep having the high calorie density processed foods. Or even if you're just, if you're eating whole food plant-based, but you're concentrating your uh, caloric intake on the high calorie density foods like nuts, seeds, nut butters, and avocado. Those are all really delicious and they're healthy, but you know what? They're not weight loss friendly. You need to be eating more at the lower range of calorie density. You need to be eating fresh fruits and vegetables and legumes and whole grains and um, potatoes and sweet potatoes. That needs to be the bulk of your caloric intake. And uh, Dr. Goldhammer always says when he sees someone who's overweight, he knows that that person is not eating enough non-starchy vegetables. So um, I have a video on calorie density. I believe it's called sequencing with calorie density. And that is what I used to lose my weight. I learned that from Chef AJ, she learned it from Dr. McDougall and the True North Health Center. So I have not done water fasting at True North, but Tom and I did go and stay there one weekend when we had friends staying there. And the way that the cafeteria is set up there, you walk in and you have the lowest calorie density foods first. That's what's in the front of the line so that you're filling your plate up with either raw or steamed non-starchy vegetables. And then when you work your way around, then the higher calorie density foods are there. And the nuts and seeds are there, but those are, are a small amount that you use as a condiment. And people neuroadapt there quite quickly because um, that's all they're eating. 
And you know, we, they say that we crave the foods that we habitually eat. And I believe that to be true. We have found that for us. We are perfectly happy, you know, eating plain food. We love it. It tastes good to us. But that's because we are not going out and having high calorie density, highly palatable processed foods. If we did that, then our our healthy food would no longer taste good to us. And I want to keep enjoying my food. So the more healthy choices you can make, the better off you will be, the quicker you will neuroadapt, the quicker the food will taste good to you. I have lots of videos that can help you, you know, how to saute oil free, how to season your food without um, salt. Um, just, you know, look through our YouTube videos and Is this how you season your water. <laughs> I love that. Isn't that beautiful? I love it. And then, and then you had this water seasoning. Going I on did too. because that makes even just plain water taste amazing. Yeah. And it's beautiful too. Plain water is so, not bad though. We like plain water. Absolutely. So anyway, um, you know, if you're struggling and things aren't going well, you will have to white knuckle it um, to power through, especially the first seven to 10 days. But you will start to neuroadapt. And the further you can get away from eating those highly palatable, high calorie density foods, the memory of them starts to fade. And then you can stop the cravings those will subside and you will start enjoying healthy food. And there's just like your brain becomes calm when you're not having cravings. And it's just, it's amazing the difference that, that eating healthy food has. So there you go. That's that I'm off my soapbox now. Okay. Um, and Jesse says, wait, will I look like her if I drink more water? Jesse, uh, uh, Jesse, Jesse. Okay, so um, if there's no other questions. We're going to eat a little bit and catch some sleep. And then we'll find you back here tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. Oh, what's, what's that about, Tom? I don't know. We'll have to tune in at 7 a.m. and find out. We are going live tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. So the um, thumbnail for that video is up. I we, will I will be having my tea, but probably I won't be eating my oats yet. I'll have my warm water okay. and lemon. Um, and we have a big reveal that something super exciting is happening. And um, we're very excited to be able to share the news with everybody, but we can't until 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. Yeah, that thumbnail is up on YouTube, so you can find it there. I also published the link in this morning's newsletter, new announcements letter, so it's there as well. And I believe we are also going to simulcast that on YouTube and on Facebook uh, at nice. the same time, like we did tonight. Yeah, so, so that will be 7 a.m. Pacific time. That will be... Um, nine o'clock central time and 10 o'clock for Eastern time. And then if you're watching from another country, I have no idea <laughs> yeah. what time it will be. People from other countries are used to sorting that out. I think at this point, I think they are. So, I, I hear that you can go on Google and put in yeah. what time would the that guy's be? asking for a hint. The answer is no, we can't, we You'll, can't we'll, give any we'll, hints. We'll see you tomorrow morning. All we can say is that it's something very exciting, right? That we've worked really hard on. And we, yes. And something that we have worked really hard on. Yeah. And so, so yeah. So okay. that's all we can say. And we're super excited. And no, I'm not pregnant. Okay. Um, <laughs> that was for the moderators. There was some unreasonable speculation going on. Um, okay. Uh, you completely made me forget what I was going to say. Okay. I got it back. <laughs> she does this. Um, Facebook Sorry. folks, welcome to our four o'clock YouTube live stream. There were a couple dozen of you that seemed Aww. to hang out for the whole time. So thank you uh, so much. Welcome to welcome to our, our four o'clock show. And you can always join us over on YouTube if you want to, yeah. because we have a very active 
um, chat going on yeah, over the, here. Yeah, I don't know if they will if they won't have seen that because they only can see their chat. Right, okay. but on YouTube, and you know, it's the same group of people week after week, and they've gotten to know each other, and there's a lot of friendly, fun chatting going on, which is it's really great. Yes, we love that. So anyway, we have the best community ever. So welcome, and we would uh, love to invite you back tomorrow morning as well to join us here. Yeah, in the Nutmeg Notebook Kitchen. And so. if you have any ideas of what you would like, um, topic ideas that you would like us to cover here on our Sunday shows, we welcome your suggestions. And you can write to either Tom at nutmegnotebook.com or Tammy at nutmegnotebook.com. Yeah. And she did. We did ask that last week and somebody sent us an email that they, they love food halls. And so we did an impromptu that veggie hall Thursday morning was Friday, Friday morning was a, uh, was was an impromptu uh, video kind, kind of incentivized by the comments. So uh, if if uh, we get those recommendations, we we listen we try to, them to and, we try to act on them. Somebody yeah. else did send me one. They want to they want me to do a video on how I wash the equipment that we use, like the air fryer and the instant pot and mm -hmm. and the blender. Um, she said, you know what? Your appliances always look so clean. I've got a power washer in the garage. <laughs> I take them out and throw them in the backyard and I hit them with the power washer on high. You do not. Oh, my goodness. He's wound up, you guys. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. So I anyway, 7 a.m. tomorrow, Pacific time, 10 Eastern. Join us then. We're, we don't want to be up talking to ourselves. So somebody needs to come join us okay. for that so that we're not Instead just of breakfast talking. at Tiffany's, it's breakfast with Tammy. There you go. Okay. And Tom. Yes. Breakfast with Tom and Tammy. Okay. I like that. That sounds good. I'm right. Tammy. And I'm Tom. And, oh, wait. we got to thank the moderators. Moderators. <laughs> thank you. They were they were busy. Randy I don't and Jesse. Think, I don't think Tiffany made it. I don't it. think Tiffany made it, but you know, her class ended today. Um, she was, was probably doing the her, last one probably ran long. It was her PCRM class, and people were bringing, um, they were virtually having a potluck where everybody was making, isn't that fun? Everybody was making a dish, and then they were going to, you know, show it on the Zoom call. So that's okay. fun. So, Tiffany, when you watch the replay, honey, we missed you, but we know oh, you were it having was a TS. great time. She really liked the impromptu food hall. Oh, thank so, you. Thank yeah, you. and we'll always do those here. If we come home and it's been like a really big run and we've gotten a pretty wide spectrum of all of our staples, it's like, wow, this is kind of like 90% of what we usually get. This would be a good example of a, of, of a significant Yeah, uh, we have run. several of them on the YouTube channel. Yeah, they do we evolve did whole, over time. We did Whole Foods, Trader Joe's, and Costco. Yeah. So you can, if you Google those, or do a search on YouTube, you'll find those. Yeah, We've but, done some but really big ones. What's on this week's episode of the food hall? <laughs> well, it wasn't a really huge one. No, I mean, I was, I was being metaphorical. Yeah. It's always fun to get new episodes of the food hall. Yeah, so. it is. Those are some of the most popular um, videos, actually. All right, you guys. So, Randy, Jesse, thank you so much. You guys are the best. Um, hopefully, yeah. we'll see you in in if the you're morning. up, if you're up, check in with us. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Jesse says she's going to go to bed early and set her alarm. Okay. And Randy, so might, Randy has work, but she might poke her head in. She might see. poke her head in because she's really curious. Okay. All, All right. right. So anyway, thanks for joining us. We love you guys. I'm Tammy. And I'm Tom. And we help you get, get healthy, healthy and stay healthy one meal, meal at a time. time. Bye -bye. See you tomorrow.